Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to use the repeating group to CSV or XLSX plugin from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your app or product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps, and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar, there's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Okay, let's take a look at the plugin itself. So on the plugin page here, this will give us a good overview of what we're looking at. To start with, let's have a look at the live demo. Now this will open up a page that has the plugin installed in a pre-built app that we've made here. So we can see how it behaves and looks and feels from a user's point of view as a fully formed uh, app with the plugin active. So we can see down here, we have a repeating group, we have a table of data uh, and we have three buttons along the top here. So um, by clicking this, probably won't show the download animation on my screen recording, but it's a download of the XLXS file. Uh, the same for the CSC file. And then for saving for file manager, this will then uh, save all the data into a file that we can then do um, further actions with past that point. So nice and simple, we, um, we, have a, we have a repeating group and then we have buttons to then convert that to the files that we're wanting to, to download and work with further. Back on our plugin page, there are two more links that we need to, uh, to have a look at before we jump into actually building. So the second is the demo editor. Now this is gonna open up the bubble editor uh, with the exact app we were just looking at with the plugin installed, all set up, uh, but from the kind of building side of things so that we can see how this is put together, see all the things that um, uh, this, this plugin can do from the bubble end of things. We can see the parameters we're working with, the workflows that uh, are related to, to this plugin. We can kind of pull it apart before installing the plugin into our app to make sure that it works for our use case and what we're wanting it to do. The last link is the documentation link here. Now this is gonna give us a whole bunch of information around everything to do with the plugin. And this covers everything from, you know, all the, the actions we have for workflows, uh, how to set up the plugin, how to set up the ID of our, um, of our elements so that the plugin knows what it's targeting and downloading, everything we need to actually have this working and, um, and functioning within our app. So between those three, um, the live demo, the demo editor, and the documentation, this will give you everything you need to get a great overview of this plugin, work out if it's right for your use case and how to install and get it all set up. Lastly, on this page, we have our Intercom chat bubble here. If you have any questions about this plugin, any questions about uh, its functionality or how to install it or getting it working within your app, send us a message here. We would love to help you out. All right, let's jump into building something basic together so we can get you up and running with this plugin. Now we're in our bubble app here, in our bubble editor. The first thing we need to do is actually get this plugin into our app. So on the left-hand side here, click on the plugins tab. Then in the top right, we're gonna click on add plugins. And in the search bar here, we're gonna write repeating group to CSV. And there we go, the top option here, repeating group to CSV XLSX by zero code. Now you'll have two options to install this plugin into your app. You either have a once off purchase or you have the monthly subscription. Now the monthly payment is the most risk-free way to try this out as you're charged on a pro rata basis, which means you only get charged for the days you have this app or this plugin installed and active in your app. So if we have the price here for $5 a month, you install this plugin, try it out for a day, decide it's not for you and you uninstall it, you're only charged for the $5 divided by 30 days in that month, however many days are in that month. So it's really risk-free, cheapest way to try this out. Uh, and then if you, yeah, if you decide it is a, a core part of your app, you can then upgrade to that single purchase. Um, but yes, whichever option you choose, click install on the app there, on the plugin there, and uh, you'll have the plugin in your app and we can get started. Okay, we have the plugin in our app. Uh, let's put together something basic so we can uh, get, get, yeah, the core of this set up and get the ball rolling uh, with this plugin. So what we're looking at here, I mean, my editor, uh, I might just make this a bit smaller. This is looking a bit big. There we go. Uh, I have a repeating group here. Now this is just super basic. I've just made a data type that has a few rows of text. Uh, I'm kind of researching home office equipment here. Um, so all I've done in this repeating group, I've just said the type of content is, I've just called it repeating group to CSV for, so I know what I'm uh, referring to. Then I've just said search all the items, nothing crazy there. 
Um, but what will change with this and what we're actually going to be looking at here is the new elements and the new actions that are now available to us with this plugin. So in your assets panel on the left here, you'll see there's a new element here called RG to CSV XLS. Now this is the element that needs to be on our page so that this plugin will function the way that, um, the, the way that it needs to. So I put this on my page here just as a invisible square. Uh, you can make this as small as you like, put this wherever you like. It just needs to be present on your page somewhere. And we're not gonna change anything. Nothing else needs to change here. This is just to add the functionality to our app. And everything we do now will be in the actions and the workflows uh, that will work off um, this element here. Let's have a quick look at those workflows first, and then we're gonna come back and do something else as uh, we'll need to set something else up. But for now, I'm gonna to go to my workflows tab, and I have an action here that's triggered when the download button is clicked. So that's this button here. I'll just call it button download, and there is now a workflow attached to it. When the download button is clicked, there's an action here called download file RG to CSV XLS A. Now the A is referring to the element we just put on our page. So if you have multiple of these on your page, you might have multiple repeating groups within your app. You'll need to specify each of these individually. I've only got the one, I've got that one element uh, and that one repeating group that it's uh, linked to and connected to. So I'm just specifying that one element here. Now, there's gonna be a few ways, a few things we need to do to make sure that this element can uh, identify the right repeating group. And that mainly comes from the ID attached to that repeating group. So if I go back to my design page here, I'm going to click the repeating group. Down the bottom, you'll see I've given it an ID attribute of RG. Now, to have this field available, you'll need to go into your settings for your bubble app. So in settings here, then general, then right down the very bottom, you'll see under advanced options, expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. And all you need to do is turn that on. Just do the check mark there. And that is then going to give you the option to add IDs to all your elements within your app. And it's this ID, this unique identifier uh, that allows our element here, our repeating group of CSV, FQLS A, to know what we want to download. So let's, let's see how it does that. I've got my repeating group, I've given an, an ID, this can be whatever you like, this needs to be something unique, I've just gone with RG for simplicity's sake. And if we go back to our workflow here, you'll see Clicking this uh, download step here has a bunch of options we need to set up. And one of those is the repeating groups ID, which is where I put IG. So this field here just needs to match the ID that we gave the repeating group uh, on the, on the uh, edit page on our canvas, which down here we can see is IG. Easy peasy. All right, cool. There's a few other things we need to set up on this uh, screen, on this element here. So we've specified what the element is. It's uh, how RG to CSV XLS A. This is where we choose what format we want to download. Now, as is the plugin's name, we have the option of CSV and XLS X. I'm going to stick with CSV for our example here. And we have the ID of RG so it knows what we're downloading. Now, as you're working through these, remember that each of these has a documentation underneath it that gives uh, a bit of extra information around what, we're, what, it, what each object does. So if you're confused with any of this, click the show documentation button or have a look at the documentation itself uh, that we looked at earlier in this video. That'll give you all the information about the plugin. Now, there are a few other things we need to set up. We have the captions. So when this downloads the repeating group, it's going to get all the data from the repeating group and put it into a table, but it also needs to know where the captions are coming from, which, you know, are the headers, the headers of our table, headers of our CSV. Um, where do those titles come from? Now I've got a few options here. We can specify them from a group if the captions are on the, the actual canvas of our app, on the front end of our app, or we can manually set these up by typing in actual header titles. Mine are from a group. So if we go to our uh, design page, you can see these are the captions here. These are the, the headers, computer, monitor, desk, and chair. Uh, and that group is, I've called it table header here, but I've also had to give it an ID and I've given it the ID captions. So if we go back to our workflow, we can see uh, the captions come from a group, which they do, and the captions, uh, the group ID is captions. So this will then mean that uh, this will allow the download, the CSV file, to put in the actual titles of the headers of our, of our spreadsheet when it does download. Then we give a, a name for the file itself. I just called it items and a separator. Um, there are a few other things we can do here. We can save it in the file manager if we want. Uh, we can actually disable captions and headers entirely if, we, if that's not necessary for our CSV. 
Uh, and then we can turn on the automatic download of the file. If that's what we're wanting to do, which it is in our case. All right. That's actually all we need to set up for this. This is, this is nice and straightforward. So, um, we have our repeating group, we have our download button. The repeating group has an ID, the table header has an ID, uh, and we have our, um, plugin element on the page. We have a workflow that when you click download, it's going to download from the element on the page specifying which repeating group we're downloading and specifying where the titles come from. Let's give it a try. Oop, that is the wrong button. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll click download. Now the download probably won't show on my screen recording. So I'm going to show in, uh, in numbers, the actual downloaded file. And here we are, here is our downloaded CSV file. So we can see we have the actual table headers from our captions group, computer model, desk and chair. And we have all the items from our repeating group in the table. You can see the file name is specified with items up the top there and everything's looking pretty good, looking the way it should. Now that's a pretty basic implementation of the plugin within the app. Like I said, there's a lot more that this can do. Uh, and the documentation here is going to be your best friend there for more advanced implementations. Things like, uh, you can change, you can actually change the data structure as part of the download. So the CSV could be different to how the repeating group is displayed in the app. You can change the order of columns. You can do custom captions and titles. You can have multiple, um, CS, uh, multiple repeating groups on one page and have them downloaded and kind of queued with preparing downloaded files. Um, there's a lot there. So have a look through the documentation. Uh, it is, it is very flexible and you can do some pretty cool things to make it work exactly the way you need to with your apps use case. But that's about it for this video. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions at all about setting up this plugin, making it work in your app or any questions before installing, please do reach out to us. We'd love to help out. And until then, happy building.